shot and it's a wonderful shot and it brings up the first Tim and Brian, he had an excellent career, of course. I mean, excellent doesn't, doesn't cover it. Um, how do you think you matched up to, to the dreams you'd have had as a, as a young man? Um, I think it went pretty well. I mean, what sort of dreams can you have as a young man? You know, obviously, the, you know, the obvious one, you know, professionally, a policeman or this, people that excite you back in, in the day when you were young. I mean, cricket was a, an integral part of, of my life from very early. And wanting to play for the West Indies, and uh, to be a part of that unit was something that I dreamt about, something I really wanted to do. If I fulfilled that, yes. As a, a team man, I believe that, you know, the success that we had in the 70s and 80s and maybe up to mid 90s, not replicating that or not even coming close to that is something of a bit of a disappointment. Um, but to spend West for 17 years playing for the West Indies, being, um, one of the, the top players in the world is definitely, you know, something that's very fulfilling and something that, that as a youngster, you know, I didn't think I dreamt of that amount of, of success. But to achieve that, I think it's been in line with, you know, my thinking as, as a young person, wanting to play for West Indies, wanting to be, you know, the best in the world. How, how would you like to be remembered in terms of your legacy as a, as a player? Well, you know, one of the questions I ask at the very end of my career is, um, you know, did I entertain? I mean, you know, no matter what you do, any sportsman today or back in the days, the most important value you got out of it is the entertainment value as a, as a spectator. You know, um, looking at Viv Richards compared to somebody else, you want to see Viv Richards because you want to be entertained. If you pay to go inside a, a cricket game, you want to see the very best at their skill. And, um, for me, it's, it's, it's that value, of course, to everybody around the world, be it a West Indian fan or be it, you know, somebody from England or Australia who were supporting their country whilst I was playing. Um, maybe more importantly is the fact that um, understanding the history of West Indies cricket, which is something you don't understand as a youngster. You know, as you grow older, you start understanding and reading about, you know, how the game was, was played the first time it was played in the West Indies. Um, the transition from uh, a sort of a colonial master West Indies team to having actual West Indians playing the game, um, all this understanding. So to be a part of that fabric, to be someone that um, contributed in some way, in a positive way to that, I, I would also want to remember that. You know, when you're talking about the history of West Indies cricket, you want to be a significant part of it and be a positive part of it. Okay. I mean, when you look at, uh, let's say, in football and you have an idea what a Brazilian player might be as opposed to a German player or a British player, in terms of cricket, what do you see as, as West Indian? I think the flair. Um, that's why most West Indians love the Brazil football team. I think we sort of share the same flair uh, for the game. Um, not a happy-go-lucky sort of attitude, but, you know, let's play the game and let's really express ourselves. And I think that's what um, the West Indies team of the past did. We were dominant, but we were also very entertaining. And they have teams in an all sporting discipline that could be very dominant, but could be very uh, robotic in their approach and you know, not the most loved, you know, if it's a, a tennis player or a golfer, or you know, if you look at Tiger Woods, I mean, you know, it's flair. You look at him and, and that's what um, the similarities between a Brazil football team and a West Indies um, cricket team. And I think that, that that was admired around the world. You know, it doesn't matter if uh, someone is from uh, another country, I think they admired the way that we played cricket. Was it something that you ever thought about consciously when, I, when you were batting? Or was it something that just happened spontaneously? Well, I think first of all, the left-handers are born with a little bit of extra flair. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, very you know, small and frail and, you know, couldn't get the ball to the, um, to the boundary if I was, you know, punishing it straight. I developed a lot of little, um, you know, flicks and cuts and things that I used the pace of the ball. So with that, a lot of style came in and, and just sort of just took over that part of my game. But for me, 
um, scoring runs, finding the gaps was important. You know, spending time in the middle, yes, is important, but you don't want to be hitting the ball straight to field, field man with a with with perfect technique. You know, if you have to open the face a little bit, I did that. So um, I felt, you know, as I grew up, that um, the entertainment factor was important. You know, I felt that, you know, you wanted to be not just the guy scoring the most runs, but you wanted to be the guy scoring the most runs with the most style. You know, and um, yeah, it, it, it just became a part of my game. Okay. Um... Would you say being Trinidad in any way shaped you as an athlete in terms of your own style of play or, or anything else about the way you play, approach the game? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, you look at, uh, if you go back in history, you know, it's, it's the people who um, live in Trinidad and Tobago from, you know, a, a Jamaican is a different um, batsman to a, a Trinidadian and a simple fact, you know, you know, back in the day where, you know, slavery and indentured laborers, we, we landed here in Trinidad and Tobago and there's a, a sort of like an equal sphere with Africans and Indians. And of course, there's a more of a melting pot now with uh, Syrians, Chinese. But w what, is, what is key is the fact that I learned my game here in Trinidad and Tobago. A Barbadian would learn his game in Barbados, where there is a lot more fast bowlers. So um, for me, it's... Um, it, it did play a very important part being um, Trinidadian. Guyanese is sort of the similar player to, to Trinidadian because of, again, the cultural background, the people that you know live in the country, a bit different to the people that live in Jamaica and Barbados and Antigua. Okay, what would, what would you say your goal is now for the rest of your, your, your career as it is at present? Well, it, transition is always a tough thing, you know. The only time I miss cricket is the fact that I have to deal with businessmen and businesswomen, which is a different kettle of fish. Yeah. You know, you feel if you feel facing Bretley or, or, or Shoy Bakhtar was difficult. You, you know, you get into the business world and you really see the sharks, and um, that is that is tough. So I'm sort of you know trying to stay afloat. Um, it's, it's wonderful to have a relationship with um, TSCTB Mobile um, for something like 14 years or 15 years, and um, to have a national company. Um, maintaining that relationship, uh, you know, is something that I'm very, very um, thankful for. Um, I just launched my new eyewear, which is great. So it's 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 life where traveling is also very important to me, and um, enjoying my life. You know, my girls ensuring that you know they're happy and they're comfortable, they're healthy. Tyler and Sydney, and just just moving on. You know, um, you don't know when your time is up. So enjoyment for me is very important, you know, not stressing too much and not, you know, not worrying too much. You know, I've created a life for myself. I have to continue doing things to sort of maintain. I'm quite happy doing that.